Ladies and germs, welcome back to my computer desk, actually, today. Sort of this old Tony style with some magic talking hands. Uh, I'm just doing a quick video on this case I designed for my calipers. Uh, just giving some insight on it, uh, talking about it a little bit, maybe providing some inspiration for some people out there. So, before we jump in to sort of this and anything about it, the brief on that is I traveled, I needed a handful of tools that were protected in a small volume, not heavy, because um, that was kind of crucial when you're dealing with air cargo. So that's kind of how this came about. So let's talk about it a little bit. This is the default case for Mitutoyo calipers for six inch calipers. It's nothing to write home about, holds your calipers. Uh, it'll hold a depth gauge here and uh, it'll hold a spare battery. And that's about it. It's plastic. These hinges uh, tend to break uh, pretty frequently, especially when you're traveling and they're getting beat up and stuff. Just not a great travel case. They're great when you're a home gamer and it's, you know, you just go and you put it in your toolbox. That's, that's great. That's fine. It serves, it serves its job. But when you're traveling, these really just don't hold up. And when I say traveling, I mean air travel. I mean any situation where people are taking luggage and throwing it around without a care. If it's in your Sprinter van, that's different. Um, another thing that tends to happen is these hinges are plastic, or these little clips are plastic, and they just don't hold well. This one basically doesn't engage at all, and this one is doing all the heavy lifting, but it's not enough. Um, this is not my daily driver pair. Hasn't been in a while. This pair is. And this is the case that I made for it. So it serves to have a couple crucial functions. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the hinges are not exposed to the outside of the box. So those are safe from getting damaged. Assuming the case can hold up, which in good wood and good packing, absolutely it can. Um, so that was kind of my first requirement because that's kind of the point of failure for every case. Uh, next, it needed to be smaller than the existing case. So this case is actually a little smaller, but these are for six inch calipers. They are not the same size. They are considerably smaller. The default case or the stock case for these Minitoyo calipers are considerably larger than this, um, both thickness and uh, and the X and the Y, or X and the Y. Uh, so this is smaller as well. It also holds more tools. So it has a dedicated spot for holding a battery here. It has a slot for a straight rule here, and it has a little cutout recess so you can push it and it can lift out. There should be a magnet here. Uh, it has a spot for a depth gauge here, um, just as the other box does. And I have a spot for a square here, a little square. The reasoning behind this was those are the three measuring tools I used the most for the work that I did at the time. They were tools that I used every single day, um, day in, day out, and I often used them together. So it made sense for them to be together. So I made a case that holds all of that stuff in a compact way. Um, so they were all together. I also oftentimes used a protractor, but there wasn't a good way to get it in this case. It'll fit in a thicker case like this, where you have all this extra space, um, basically here, up in the top, and it just slots in here and all that. That's great, but in this case, it doesn't fit, and it's not gonna fit without the compromises that I don't really want. Uh, this particular one, you can see it's pretty compact. It's, you know, about the same thickness as the much smaller six inch case. Um, it's about the same like depth, I suppose. And the width is considerably more, but not two inches more. It's considerably better off than it is for uh, the, def the case that comes with the calipers. These are Mitutoyo calipers, if you couldn't tell already. Um, so that was a crucial sort of design feature was the size. This particular one is machined out of Wenge, which is a type of wood, obviously. Uh, and it honestly kind of came out like crap. Um, it's probably going to be hard to tell on camera, but there are a lot of chunks of chipped out material here. 
uh, especially here on some of the uh, contours. There's a huge chip out here. So if I pull this up here, you can probably see there's a huge chip out of the case there. Um, there were a few issues with that. One, I just cut way too aggressively. Um, I was going about 10 thou um, per tooth for my chip load, and that was probably twice what it needed to be for this material. Second, Wenge just doesn't material or uh, machine well. It's a material that's very prone to like shattering and chipping. Um, I should have done a finish pass on it, but at the time we were still working out some quirks with this machine that was, for lack of a better term, prohibitive to that. Um, and I was also using an upcut uh, end mill. So I bought that mill before we had a router and, at my makerspace and I used it for, I bought several of them and I had them for machining metal, but it was also the best end mills or bits that we had for the router. And it pulls up on it and it rips chunks out of the material. Uh, and then I took it and I finished it with uh, mineral oil and then I coated it in beeswax. Um, or like a, a beeswax and lemon oil mix. There's a specific brand of it. I may or may not pop it up on screen. Um, and that just gives it this wonderful finish. It really does look pretty amazing um, in person. It's, it's quite pretty if you ignore, you know, again, more chips out here and the edges here and some scrapes and stuff from just use. But this these days just lives in my toolbox. Uh, it lives in the toolbox, it's in the shop that holds all my machine tools for the most part. So it doesn't doesn't really get beat up much. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. It's a pretty well machined uh, or pretty well designed case in my opinion. It's elegant, it does what it needs to do. Uh, it looks great, I've gotten a lot of comments on this. Um, and it also increased the functionality of the case that I had so I could protect more tools in a smaller space, which was very crucial to what I was doing at the time. I do want to remachine this out of, I want to try Wenge again, but Wenge is pretty expensive as woods go. This case just in material because of how I had to buy it at the time came out to like $50 and just material, not even counting time or anything. Um, not that I would count time for this, but not counting time. Um, <clears throat> so I might try walnut. I think walnut is a pretty good wood. I could try maple. Um, oh, I'll try something else in the future, but I want to try remachining this with some better bits that are more designed for routing and are just generally going to give me a better finish and try some techniques that I've learned work better on this particular router. See where I can go. But this is just sort of a short blurb that looks like it'll probably be more like closer to 10 minutes than I had hoped. Uh, just about a little thing I had designed and maybe it'll give some inspiration for other people on taking an existing thing and redesigning it for your needs and making it better. Making it suit what you need more than what is available uh, off the shelf. Thanks for watching. Uh, probably don't subscribe. I don't make a lot of videos, but do if you want to and like the video if you thought this was neat and cool. Bye bye.